Welcome back to the SNS Grills channel. My name is Greg from the Ballistic Barbecue channel and the Ballistic Burgers channel. And on today's video, I'm going to be cooking up a beautiful boneless leg of lamb on the slow and sear Kamado. And as an added bonus, I'm going to be using SNS Grills rotisserie accessory, which was specifically designed for this cooker. Let's get going. So before we actually start the cook, what I want to do is make a really nice kind of a Dijon mustard, herbal, garlicky slather, for lack of better words. Let's get going with that. Kick it off with a bunch of chopped fresh garlic, some Dijon mustard, chopped fresh rosemary, chopped fresh thyme, some extra virgin olive oil, a little kosher salt, some freshly squeezed lemon, let a little fresh black ground pepper, give it a whisk. And there we are. We'll set this aside and we're going to prep that leg of lamb. So here's that leg of lamb. It's boneless, weighs in a little over five pounds and you may notice if you look really close that there's like kind of the grid pattern impressed into the meat. This came already, it was a cryo vac but it also was in one of those mesh bags to kind of hold everything together to truss it which is great, makes it easy on the cook but for what I'm going to do, if I leave that bag on, that mesh bag on, at the end of the cook, it's going to pull a lot of the crust off, which I don't want to do. So we're going to basically retruss it using butcher's twine. So I like to start off in the middle and then work my way out. So I'm just going to take a length of twine. Now there is a specific knot for doing this, it's called a butcher's knot which is pretty easy to learn, but I'm making it even easier with a knot that you will never forget. Let me show you how I do this. So first we'll take those two ends, make a simple overhand knot. It's the knot we tie when we're starting to tie our shoes and then pass it through one more time. And that'll keep it from slipping. And you can see it's holding itself. I'm not touching the, the twine and it's not opening up. And then we'll just finish it by one more overhand knot. And that's locked in. Let's take a knife and cut off the ends. And then we're going to repeat. And trussing is very important, especially on a rotisserie, because this is a boneless leg. So a butcher cut the bone out. And if we don't truss it, it's just going to be flopping all over the place. It's going to be out of balance on the spit, which is not a good thing. So we're just going to repeat that going down. And if you see a, a loose piece like this, make sure you capture that on the twine here. The next thing I'm going to do is actually put it on the spit and then I'm going to apply that slather we made. So here's the spit you'll get with this rotisserie ring accessory. First thing we're going to do is apply the tine. I'm calling it a tine. I don't know if that's the proper terminology, but that's what I always call it. We can make adjustments with this after the meat is on the spit. Just try to center it in here. Make sure you push it all the way in and compress it. Second set of tines. Now you can see the meat is not centered on this, so I'm just going to loosen up the back tines. <laughs> loosen the front, and then I'm just gonna push it down. Just kind of center it as best you can. Now 
There we are, this is what we want to see. Now we can apply the slather. And you know what? To make it even easier, that's what I have gloves on for. Just gonna rub it in. There we are, easy stuff. Let's get this pit lit. So I think you've all seen the Slow and Sear Kamado, fantastic cooker. In case you haven't seen this rotisserie ring, let me show you that right now. So here's the ring, as typical SNS grills, stainless steel, and it's got a wedge shape. Basically, the thin part of the wedge is going to go into the back. It's just going to set on the rim of the cooker with that thin wedge portion towards the back. And this will allow the lid to seal perfectly with the rotisserie ring when you're using it. Obviously, here's your rotisserie motor mount. It just slips on, easy stuff. Now for this cook today, as you can see, I'm using lump charcoal and I just have it banked up against the rear wall of the firebox. Now to get this lump going, basically what I did is I just got a few pieces of lump lit in a chimney. I use those cherry pickers, nestle them up into the lump. So now we're just gonna leave the lid open. I have that bottom damper fully open and I'm just going to allow this lump that I just added to really establish itself before we start setting the temperature. All right, we're about 15 minutes in. As you can see, I have a very nice established batch of lump burning there. I'm going to go ahead and close the lid here. I'm going to set the lid damper to number two right now, and I'm going to leave that bottom damper fully open. So as far as the cooker temperature is concerned, I'm looking for 300 degrees Fahrenheit to 325. It'll be at that lower end of like roasting temperatures, but for this rotisserie cooked lamb, it's going to be perfect. So it's about another 15, 20 minutes and we are rolling right now at about 320, which is where I want to be. Let's get that lamb on. All right, so on the spit we have a pointed end and we have a square end. Square end goes into the square hole on the rotisserie motor. Flip that switch. We're rolling. For this cook, I'm going to add a little bit of wood. This is just a little cherry, a little bit of smoke going on here. Close the lid. So now the easy part, really all I have to do is monitor the pit temperature. Right now, yeah, it's locked in on 300 again. It was rolling 320 pretty stable before I put the lamb on. If it starts to go up beyond that 325 degree Fahrenheit cap that I've kind of set in my head, I'm just gonna shut down that lower damper a little bit. Right now it's rolling pretty stable. After about, say about 35, 40 minutes, I'm going to check the internal temperature of this roast. I'm going to be pulling it when it hits 130 degrees. So I'll see you in a bit. All right. So we are 40 minutes in and it is time to take a little temperature reading here. I wanna make sure that we don't hit the spit with this probe. 113 degrees Fahrenheit. This back on. So yeah, 40 minutes, 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, 130 is my target, and I will see you then. All right, we are at one hour and 15 minutes cooking time. I just took the temperature, it's done. And look at that. Go ahead and turn off the rotisserie. So that was a pretty fun, pretty easy cook, actually. Now what I'm going to do is allow this lamb to rest, probably about 15 or 20 minutes, and then we'll slice it up and see what it looks like. <laughs> I have a feeling it's gonna taste really good. All right, here we are, <laughs> all rested, looking beautiful. So the first thing I'm going to do is Slice off these trusses, the butcher twine. Now let's give it a slice. Nice. Wow. <laughs> 
looking good. I am very, very happy with this cook. Very happy. Uh, what do I want? Try this right here. Try to be a little bit more civilized here. First of all, it feels so tender. So it's not the least bit gamey at all. Getting a rush of those herbal flavors and the lemon. The garlic is not overpowering at all. Getting a little bit of smoke. This is some of the best lamb I've ever had. I love lamb. My wife, not so much. She's gonna dig this. My son loves lamb. This is going to be a great couple meals, I think, for our family. Anyway, guys, if you're not subscribed to the SNS Grills channel, please hit that red button. Make sure you ring the notification bell if you enjoyed this video, and I really hope you did. Thumb it up. Remember, two zones are always better than one. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. <laughs>